In this tutorial, I'm going to give you some code and show you how to use it. And it's going to allow you to add a last modified date to your blog posts. So if you publish a blog post in 2015, but you're continually updating it, every time it's updated, automatically you'll have the last modified date added to the post so people know, your visitors know, that you're constantly updating your content, refreshing it. So a blog post from 2015 is still relevant in 2018 because you're modifying it. And this code, of course, is on the blog. I'm going to show you how to use it in this video. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. We help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet and it's your first time here, make sure you click subscribe to keep up to date with all the latest WordPress tips, tricks, and hacks, and all that good stuff. And with that out of the way, Check out our Facebook group where we're hanging out, we're talking WordPress, we're helping each other. Link in the description down below. Now let's get into this screen capture. To add the last modified date, I've made it pretty simple. All you have to do is copy and paste some code into your functions file, and hopefully there's no conflicts and it just works out of the box like it does in this example. And what it will do is, right now we have a published date, which is April 3rd for this post. Actually, it's not even published, this is the preview of the draft. But when this post is published, there's gonna be a published date. And then this piece of code is going to add another line saying this post was modified on whatever data it was modified on. And that's what this code is going to do. So you're gonna have a published date and a modified date that both appear on the same page for when you update posts because that's quite handy to have so people know that you keep refreshing your content. The reason I'm doing this is on my blog post, I've got posts that go back to 2014, 2015, but I keep updating them, but the date stamp still says 2015. People see the date and they say, oh, that's really old, outdated, so they don't even read it. But I've updated it recently, but they don't know that. So this is gonna help people know that. And we're gonna do this on the test site first because it's always good to test things before you go out in the real world with stuff. And I'm just gonna find a post. I'm gonna find one that was published a little while ago. This was in January. Let's open this one and see how it looks on the front end. So here we have a publish date of January 19th, 2018. And this is the one we're gonna use for this example. And what we have to do is copy and paste the code that we have here into our functions file. So I'm just gonna copy this code and I'm going to go into my cPanel and then File Manager. You can do this via FTP as well if you're more comfortable in FTP. Just gotta open your uh, functions file for the theme. Go to public underscore HTML, go to WP Content, Themes, find the parent theme or the child theme that you're running. Hopefully you're running a child theme. If you don't know what that is, check the card above. Child themes are very cool stuff. I'm gonna open theme folder. Here are functions file here. Now the first thing we're gonna do is back up the functions file. In case something goes wrong, I can always revert back to the backup. So I'm just gonna highlight it, click on copy, call it functions.php-backup. And now we have a backup here. If something goes wrong, we can delete the main one and go to the backup. I'm gonna open the main one in the editor and I'm simply going to paste in this code and then click on save changes. And before I explain what this code does, let's see what happens. So this post does not have an update. Now what that means is inside of this code, the first thing we do is we get the content of the page because we're gonna associate the published modified date with the content as a, as a positioner on the page. And then next we find the time of publishing, which is in the database, it is the time the post was actually published. Next, we get the time of update, which is a variable we create and it gets the modified time of the post. If the post has not been modified, this is gonna be a zero value and nothing's gonna be up on the front end. And if it's not a zero value, we have this if statement that says, if the date of the update or time of the update is greater than or equal to the time of the publishing plus 43,200 seconds, which is 12 hours, then we run this function. What this allows us is a 12 hour buffer. So let's say for example, you publish your posts, but you always find that you're tweaking them after you publish and you never tweak them beyond 12 hours. So if you publish a post, but you're still updating 11 hours after it's published, that will not cause this to trigger. It will only trigger after 12 hours after publishing. If you want to set this to a different time, it's got to be in seconds, which you see right here. You can just head over to Google and type in how many hours are however many seconds, and then you can just switch it to if you want 48 hours, 
This is how many seconds. You just copy and paste that value into here, and that's how many hours that will be. Now for this example, I'll more than likely have to delete that because I'm gonna update the post right now and then see hopefully this function appear. Uh, but for you, you can set this to whatever number of seconds you want to give you that buffer of updating while you're creating the post. And if this if statement returns true, we set the update date to the modified date, update time to the modified time, and we add this piece of code to the page which gives us a class to do CSS on if you want to, and it says modified on date at time. It's in a paragraph tag, pretty straightforward, and then this just basically adds it to the top of the content, and then we run the function with this. And that all sounds very complicated. It's not that bad, because all you have to do is copy and paste it. And then update this number of seconds or number of hours if you want to give yourself a bigger buffer or a smaller buffer. I'm just going to take this, as you know, first I'm going to edit this page. I'm going to add in here, I just updated this, click on update. Now this puts a second entry, second timestamp into the database for a modified timestamp. Every post has a published timestamp if it's live, but not every post has a modified timestamp because not every post has been modified after it was published. Now I can go back out to the post, and I was saying earlier that I probably have to delete that number of hours buffer to make this work, but I probably won't because I wasn't thinking it through, this was published January 19th and it is now April 3rd. So it's clearly more than 12 hours past the publishing date. So if I refresh this, we should have a new line in here that says when this post is modified. And there's our new line. Modified on today's date. That's the wrong time. That time is based on the timestamp inside of WordPress. So if we go into, I believe it's general, settings and then general, we have a timestamp here, which is by default UTC plus zero and 6.05 p.m. So it's the timestamp from WordPress, but for me, it's actually 11.05. So if you want to have this more accurate for yours, make sure you set your time zone properly. But we've now output the modified date and this will keep updating. So if you update this post again next month, it's gonna say modified on whatever date and time it was updated on. And that way, users can come to your page, they can see the post is older, but they can also see that you're present and that you keep updating your content. And that's a great thing. So that's all there is to adding a modified date. Hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe, then click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. Head over to our Facebook group as well. We're hanging out, we're doing lots of cool stuff over there. And next up, click one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. Until next time, keep crushing it. And I will see you in the next video.